Hey guys, welcome back to HRG TV. My name is Ben. Today we're going to do the installation of our two and a half inch lift kit for the Bronco Sport Badlands Edition. Now this lift kit will not fit the Big Bend Outer Banks models. We are working on that, but for right now, first edition in Badlands is all we got. All right, this job actually starts with removing the battery. So we're gonna do that real quick. Remove the negative terminal first and just comes right off, unloosen that there. Pull this off here. Huh. Brand new car. It's already starting to rust. Let's take this out next. Okay, under here, I'm gonna need to remove the entire skid plate. This is the HRG skid plate. I'll be taking that off first. Four 12 millimeter bolts hold this piece in, and then additional bolts back there for the original OEM skid plate. So we'll take that out right now. That'll give us access to the bolts that hold the subframe to the rest of the car. All right, I forgot to mention that whenever you're taking the factory skid plate out, there's normally screws that go here and uh, go into the skid plate. There's little clips that hold these to the skid plate, so you want to take those out as well. We will be putting these back in at the end of the installation. The front subframe is held in by basically three bolts on each side. We've got one right in here. I don't know if you can see it. It's right there. There's one right there. And then another one back here. Now this one here has this bracket and we'll be putting spacers on those two bolts as well, dropping this entire bracket down just a little bit, lower it here, here and here on both sides. And then we're going to drop the engine. An important thing to remember when installing subframe kits is you do not want to take all the bolts out at the same time because there's basically six bolts that hold the entire assembly. And I do mean engine, transmission, the whole suspension assembly to the car. If you take all six out, it will fall on the ground. So we only take two out at a time and replace them with the longer bolts. Basically, you're just gonna remove the screw from right here and pull this back. And that is gonna give you access to this bolt here, which is the frontmost subframe bolt, which is right there. Next, you're gonna take this bolt out with a 15 millimeter socket and a long extension. You have to do this on both sides, as well as the two main bolts on the underside of the car. We can place our M12 spacer right here. Now you're gonna put the bolt through this ABS relocation bracket, which is gonna go right about there. Make sure you have this oriented just like this. And then basically, I'm just gonna tighten that up. Now you're gonna to wanna to pay attention so this doesn't twist. Right about there is where you're gonna want it. Just tighten it on up. And there you have that. Underneath the car, you've got two main subframe bolts and you're gonna to wanna to support the subframe with a jack while you lower it down. But basically you're gonna place the green M16 spacer between the subframe and the body. And then you've got two M10 spacers that go between the bracket and the body. 
we are going to go back through one more time before this is finalized and torque everything nice and tight. Now on this front bolt right here, Ford did us a favor and gave us a super long bolt already. You see there's plenty of thread right there, so we don't actually have to put a longer one in. This one's in position. We can go ahead and thread the bolt through. I always try to hand thread a little bit, make sure the threads are engaged properly. I've cross-threaded a few screws in my day, so try not to do that. A lot of dust. I do take this thing off-road quite a bit, so... I mean, you know, it's gonna happen. But there you go. There's your finished bolt. And see, plenty of extra threads. Normally under here, you would see another heat shield, which would normally go right about here. Your car will have that, and it does just bolt back into the same locations where it was before. So you do not have to remove it. I just removed mine because it just seemed superfluous and flimsy. All right, let's talk about the fender liners real quick. Now these are, loose enough that you can drop this subframe down an inch without affecting them too much but we are going to lose this mounting point right here as you can see this no longer lines up so the what we're going to have to do to fix that is drill a hole right where that wants to be right there looks good to me and just ever so carefully guys oh let me put that in high gear there we go Come on. This thing sucks. There you go. And then you can put your clip right back in place. There you go. Now that is held up right where it needs to be. Now we've got the subframe drop. We're gonna move back up here to the transmission mount. I do have the engine supported by the jack so it doesn't fall when I take these out. But again, you never want to take all the bolts out at once. It's a foolish move, so don't do it. Ask me how I learned that. Basically, we're going to take them out one at a time where the holes stay in line. Because if you take them all out, you'll never get them lined back up. Well, you will eventually, but it's just extra work to do it that way. So I always just do them one at a time so that everything stays lined up. Now we're going to put a spacer here, 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 and back there. That'll drop the engine down exactly one inch. There's one, I see it goes in there. Billet aluminum spacer, so again, everything we use is super strong, super durable. Okay, I'm not gonna tighten it all the way because we need a little bit of leeway to move these around. This one here. Again. Thread it in by hand. Always thread it in by hand before you hit it with a tool. Definitely another situation of ask me how I know not to do that. All right, now that we've got all the bolts and spacers in the transmission mount, go ahead and tighten everything up. You'll see it lift the motor. When I tighten it up, I'll just do one at a time here. We'll go back through these again after everything is done. We'll obviously make sure that everything is completely tight but for now this is good now you can see how this whole thing works let's go ahead and move on over to the other side over here and drop the engine side all right once you've removed these nuts here there's three of them here it's an 18 millimeter you're going to need to remove the studs that go into the engine mounting bracket an eight millimeter socket for that and you just basically we're just going to put it right on there like so like that all right we're gonna go ahead and take this reservoir off just one bolt make sure you throw that somewhere where it gets lost see what i mean Jeez. now there's two little clips that hold this in place and basically this just lifts up just like everything else in my videos easier said than done okay so there's a little thing you have to spread it open get it unclipped other than that, easy to get it off. And just, just kind of push it out of the way. You don't have to take anything all the way off. Just take the bolt out 
and just pick it up and move it. Now, as you can see, we have a little bit easier access to these bolts. Now, what I've done here is lifted the engine up just enough where nothing's bound up. This is nice and loose. We should be able to move everything around to get the bolts to thread in nice and easy. Um, if you don't do that, sometimes it can get in a bind and it is very difficult to get everything lined up. Lucky for me, I own a lift kit company. We have these things laying all over the fucking place, so no big deal there. Just grab some more out of the bin. So we're gonna have to grab those bigger bolts out real quick down there. I thought I could get by without taking this piece out, but obviously it has to come out. I mean, not all the way out, but the trouble is you can't get your fingers down in there. So now that we have this out, we can set our spacers on these little ledges right here, like this. The spacers go right there. Nice and pretty. And now we're going to thread the bolts in by hand, get those tight, and then we can put the big ones in. There's one, two, three. Now we're just going to make every effort not to cross thread anything. Okay, we got all those three put in. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten them up. We will tighten these again after we're finished with everything else, just to make sure. Now, as you can see, we're a little off here. The engine has shifted that way a little bit, which I think we can correct with the jack. Just gonna pull a little bit back towards me. And let's see if that did enough. Oh yeah, did you hear that drop right in? That's the sound of a plan coming together. Now you can see how easy that was. I know people are probably gonna struggle with this part, but honestly, it's not that difficult. Once you take things apart, like this bolt, this bolt, these two here, and then these three, and that's it. And you can get this whole thing off, put all the spacers in, put it back together. Let's go ahead and put all these back together. We're gonna double check everything. Go ahead and put the engine cover back on, and then we can move on to the rest of the car. All right, last step. We're going to make sure everything is tight. And I have my trusty ratchet here. Just a tiny little bit snugged up there. The other ones are perfect. I took this one off too, so let's get that one. Yep. Four more on this side with the half inch ratchet. And we're just gonna uh, give it a tug. Make sure that these are not going to come loose. If you feel so inclined, you could use a torque wrench. I'd probably say 65 foot pounds would be decent enough. For stuff like this, just get it really tight. Trust me, you'll be fine. There we go. All those are done, engines dropped. All right, as you can see, we've got the battery back in. Basically just reverse the order of disassembly, putting it back in there. Make sure you clip this little plastic thing on the terminal right there, okay. Now the air box just goes right back in place. You got two clips here. You got two little push pins here. There's one more underneath. My Bronco is actually missing the little rubber grommet underneath this. Um, not there from the factory, so it must have fell out, I don't know, but I'm not too worried about it, honestly. But these two clips here hold this in and then we can put the air filter back in and then the top of the air box will just plug right back into that. I'll show you that in just a second. This engine's dropped an inch, but you'd never know because there's already plenty of slack. Even in the radiator hoses, wiring harnesses, it's not an issue because they give you so much extra slack. As you can see, look, there's plenty of loose leeway slack in all of these lines hoses right here here's your ac line it is all good under the hood of the bronco sport with a two and a half inch lift kit all right the gopro shut off while i was putting this in but as you can see you just want to clip it back into place these clips go back on jam the tube right back onto this fitting here don't forget to hook up the air intake temperature sensor right there oh my light went out i don't know if you can see it now but goes right there like that and then you got these last two little clips that hold this air intake tube on oh you mother 
Well, that one's gone. Anyway, this goes here. There should be a little clip that goes there, but I just lost it. So mine will be the only Bronco Sport in the world that doesn't have a little clip right there. Okay, that's pretty much it. Engine cover, oh, hey, wait a second. I see it. It's right there. It's not lost after all. Now, if I can get my fingers on it without knocking it down into the oblivion. Oh, look at that, I got it. Done. Okay, now I feel a little better about it. Um, last step, engine cover. Just line it up ever so gently, unless you're reckless like me and then you just smash it on there. Okay, done. Done. There you are, it is all finished. What do you think? Can't even tell, right? All right, one last thing we have to do before we finalize everything is we're going to re-drill these screw holes back just a tiny little bit so that the screws will line up. You could just use the same drill bit that you used up there. It's a quarter inch hole right about here. Now, what I want you to see is when you push the skid plate up, now you can line up the hole for your screws. All we gotta do just put the screw back in like nothing ever happened. And now, as you can see, we're bolted in nice and tight. It does look a little differently, but nobody can see under here anyway. My skid plate is a little bit bent up, so yours might fit just a little differently than mine, but it will still fit if you drill that hole there. So just do that all the way across, put your screws back in and reassemble everything and you're good to go. All right, putting the skid plate in is a little bit difficult if you're by yourself. Much easier if you have a friend, but I don't have any of those, so we're going to we're going to show you how you put it in by yourself. So you've got these little spacers right here. They're little standoffs, basically. It gives the skid plate a little bit of room. So now, I just want to thread the bolt through that little standoff there. And then you can just tighten it on up. 12 millimeter socket. There you go. And put that back in in just a second but yeah there you go skid plate done all right next we're going to remove the struts start with taking the brake line off that is an eight millimeter socket to take that bolt out there just remove that brake line all right now we got to move the abs line basically you just unclip it from the hub right there there's a little clip you can just push it with your finger and release it it's right there just push that little clip and it comes right off and then pull it off from here like that and we're not going to use this plastic piece anymore you can leave it there or take it off i'm going to leave it there just in case they ever put this thing back to factory so pull that off of there and then this little clip here holds it to the frame so take that out now we're just going to relocate the abs line to a different route it's going to go through that brake line there just right underneath and then pull that on through. You will not use these clips anymore either. You can take that off or leave it on, whichever you choose. Basically now you can see where this goes, right into this bracket, like that. You're gonna pull the two main bolts out that hold the strut to the wheel hub. You can see here has a camber adjustment bolt which we will be reusing. And the lower bolt is basically the same process. <laughs> So to get this sway bar link out, you have to steer the wheels to the left. That'll give it room to slide out of this mounting point right here. There you go. Now normally there'd be little clips that hold this cowl cover on. Uh, there's one there and then there's several more across on this. Um, I've had this thing on and off so many times that I've lost most of mine. So when you take this off, you will have to take those clips off. Be careful, they will fall down in the engine bay. Now underneath here, you've got just the one bolt there that holds this plastic cover and then this bolt here. And once you get those bolts out, this piece just lifts out. Just pull this up and pull that out right there, just like that. Now you can get to these three bolts. If you look here, this is the stock sway bar link on the left and this is the one that comes with the kit on the right. As you can see, this one is quite a bit shorter and that is to account for the strut actually moving down and this keeps the bottom of the sway bar mount in line so that it doesn't hit the lower control arm down here. These are actually much thinner and they have plastic ends 
So these are really solid. I think they should be at least as durable as factory, if not better. All right, the only downside about these new sway bar links is that they're a little bit more squared off at the back where these are a little bit more rounded off. And what that means now is basically when this suspension is all the way down, it does contact right here just a little bit. So what we're gonna do is create a little bit of clearance for this sway bar so that it doesn't hit with a heavy hammer. Shouldn't take too much. Just gonna dent it in just a little bit. I know that sounds scary, but really it's just creating clearance and you're not damaging any of the structural integrity of it. I'm just trying to make a little bit of room for that sway bar. That should be enough. And you may just want to hit that with a little bit of paint to get it where it won't rust if you um, dinged it up at all while you're doing this job. But basically just a little bit of touch up. We should be good to go to put it back together. All right, so the new spacers are a right and a left. They are offset to account for the, uh, the geometry of the suspension. So you're going to have a left and a right. And obviously this is going to be right side, AKA passenger side. So we're going to just mount this on like so with the bolts that come with the kit. These are M8 by 16 bolt and three of those right there. And then we're going to reuse the factory bolts to mount it in the top. And then just put it all right back in place. Be careful with the ABS line. You don't want to get that hung up, but it's much easier with a helper. Now, as you can see, you'll be able to see the right and the left through this little peephole here. And then all you gotta do is just tighten the bolts up. Now we're gonna bolt the strut back to the hub using one of the two original bolts in the bottom hole. And in the top hole, you're gonna install the adjustable camber bolt. As you can see, this one's used. Uh, we actually had a one and a half inch lift kit on this when we did this two and a half inch install. So that's why the sway bar link was a little bit different as well. But the camber bolts come with a locking nut, which means you can't thread it all the way on by hand. You have to impact it on. A lot of people think they cross thread, but it's just made that way so that the nut doesn't back its way off. And then I'm just gonna clip this back in place. There you go. All right, now we're gonna relocate the actual brake line. Normally it would just bolt right there, but we're gonna give it a little bit more slack by adding a spacer right here. Now all you have to do is put the spacer in between the brake line and the brake line mount as shown, and then thread it in. One more thing I wanna mention on this is I actually used an adjustable wrench to bend this bracket down to give the brake line a little bit more slack. As you can see, normally it would be straight up and down like this, but I use this wrench to bend it downward like so. That just gives the brake line a little bit more slack. All right, we've got one more very, very important step to do on this kit. We are going to create clearance around this coupler right here. This is the steering coupler, passes through the firewall right here. And after you drop the subframe and steering rack, there is some contact, as you can see right here, on this little piece of metal. So we're going to move that piece of metal out of the way so that it does not contact it anymore. There's probably a more ideal tool to do this. Um, I'd say probably a body saw would be better, but I am limited on what tools I have. So I have this little deburring bit right here. And I think I'm gonna grind away a little bit of metal so that it has clearance. We just have to get enough where it doesn't hit it when you turn the steering wheel. All right, this has turned out to be more of a pain in the butt than I thought, but not because the job is difficult. It's because I don't have the right tool. What I ended up doing here is I just took a flathead screwdriver and bent that little edge right there out of the way so that this thing can turn freely, doesn't hit the metal anymore. If you used a body saw, you would just cut a little notch to gain the clearance for this to turn, easy as that. So on the other side of the firewall, you've got a little gap now since we've dropped the subframes and therefore the steering rack. So there's a little area between that rubber gasket and the metal that needs to be filled in and that's what the foam seal is for. You'll see that in the kit, it's a gray piece of foam with a split on one side 
and that is gonna go right between that rubber seal and the firewall okay moving on to the back now I didn't get a very good shot of doing this particular step but as you can see the subframe in the back is lowered down about an inch and to do that basically you're just gonna pull the bolts out one at a time and just put two of the new bolts back in that's going to support the weight of the subframe and also keep it in line. Since this entire assembly is going to be dropping down with the lift, we have to relocate the rear brake lines and to do that, just remove that clip, get that brake line freed up from the factory tab. Now I am going to show this installation retaining that factory tab in case you ever want to put it back to stock but it would be easier to do this if you just remove that tab. It would be a less interference for the brake line once it's moved, but that is entirely up to you. Whoever's doing the installation can make that decision. Next, you're gonna place one of the 2.75 by one M14 spacers between the subframe and the body, and that is basically gonna function as your subframe drop spacer. Next, you're going to find the M14 by 130 bolt, pass it through the bracket as shown in through the subframe and through the subframe spacer into the body. Now, this bracket is very finicky on how it has to be clocked, which means that how it's turned in relation to where the brake line is. You want to have it directly below the factory tab, which is a bit of a challenge, I'll admit, but you have to just give it a few tries to get it in the right position. That way, when you place the brake line into the bracket, it doesn't touch the upper bracket. Basically, all you have to do is move the hard line around and position the lower brake line bracket in a way that the brake line fits properly without touching anything. Uh, as you can see, we fiddled around with this for, for quite a while before we were able to get it in position. But you'll see once it, it is in position, it clips right into that lower bracket and you can put everything back in the factory plastic clips just like it was and it will fit like it was meant to be there. Once you have everything in position, just tap the little retainer clip back in place. I used a hammer, but if you're doing it right, probably use a pair of pliers. Either way, just get that back on and that will lock it in place. And then from there, you can tweak it just a little bit to get it where you want it. This brake line does not move when the car is driving around. So once you set it where it's gonna be, it's just gonna be there. Don't have to worry about it swinging around and bumping into stuff. Next, we're gonna install the rear shock extension brackets. So just pull these two bolts out that hold the shock to the body. And we're gonna install a little plate that relocates that shock. Now, as you can see, there's two holes there already from the factory, which come in handy for the mounting hardware on the shock extension. You do have to trim away a little bit of that fender liner felt, as you can see here, I just cut it with a pair of scissors. And now the shock extension bracket will bolt to the shock using hardware included with the kit. Now that you have the shock and the shock extension bracket assembled, just place it back in the factory location using the bolts that come with the kit and two aluminum spacers that bring it out just a little bit. That is gonna complete the installation on the shock extension bracket. Of course, just tighten those bolts up nice and tight and you're good to go. The trailing arm spacers are the same on the two and a half inch kit with regard to the installation procedure. There is a one and a half inch spacer now instead of a one inch. The bolts are just a little bit longer for the two and a half inch kit. But as you can see, same type of procedure, just drops this pivot point down to maintain factory geometry. Next, we're gonna remove the springs. And to do that, you wanna support that lower control arm with a floor jack and then pull the bolts out carefully. Now you can release the tension on that spring without putting anyone's lives in danger. Now that that's dropped, the spring should just pull right out. Remove the rubber isolator from the top of the coil spring and then place it on the spring spacer and then place that back onto the coil spring. Pay attention to the clocking of where the spring fits into that rubber isolator, that is important. And once you got that done, just put the spring back in top first. And now as you can see, again, we look at the clocking of the spring in relation to the rubber isolator. Make sure that that is in position where it was before. And then just use your floor jack to lift that rear lower control arm, allowing you to line up the mounting hole on the shock with the mounting hole on the lower control arm. Do the same thing with the wheel hub. Just jack it up until you can get the holes lined up enough to get the bolt in. It is a little bit tricky, but with a little bit of pushing and pulling, you should be able to get the bolt in fairly easily. And then of course, just tighten those bolts up and you're pretty much good to go on the rear.
Now that we've lowered the subframe an inch, we also have to lower the muffler an inch. This is actually to keep the exhaust from touching the bottom of the subframe since it's lowered. So basically you've got a bolt and a spacer on each side. Driver side is just a bolt and a spacer. The passenger side actually includes this bracket to relocate the wiring harness that would normally attach to the muffler mount. So basically just a bolt and a spacer and then you've got this little tab. You can bolt that wiring harness to secure it. All right, guys, that pretty much wraps it up. Now, I want to mention the installation time of this is typically going to be about six hours. If you're a shop, want to know how much to charge, it's about a six-hour job. Four hours up front, two hours in the back. The front is a lot more complicated, obviously. There's a lot more stuff to take apart. Now, you'll be able to knock that down after the second or third one you do because it actually isn't that difficult. I think I did this job in a lot less than that, but um, I've been doing this a while. Now, don't forget, you have to get an alignment. We do still get calls from people with drivability issues and discover that they did not get an alignment after the car was lifted. So I always have to mention that. Definitely get your alignment done after because none of the suspension is gonna be where it was. You have to get that done. So lastly, let's talk about tire size. Everybody's gonna wanna know what size tire you can put on without doing any cutting. So if you're using the stock wheels, it's a 245, 65, 17. I would not go any bigger than that if you're not prepared to do at least a little bit of modifications, even with the two and a half inch lift kit. That's my two cents on tire size. If you're playing it safe, just go with the tried and true 245, 65, 17. If you really wanna risk it for the biscuit, go with the 30. I know there's guys that have gone even bigger than that, but be prepared to do a little bit of modification on your fenders. So anyways, guys, I really appreciate you watching these videos to the end, and I'll see you in the next one. All right, one more test to do on the two and a half inch lifted Bronco Sport. We're gonna see if it gained any flex, which means articulation in the suspension after adding the kit. So we're gonna lift it up with the forklift here ever so carefully. All right, let's go ahead and measure. I think our old measurement was like 10 and a half inches, which is not too bad for a unibody vehicle. So let's take a look. Eh, it's about the same. Maybe a little bit more. It's pretty close to being the same, honestly. 